If you want wrestling action, you've come to the right place. It's just a shame a lot of it really didn't mean anything in the end. I'm John Ritham with the Retro View of WCW Thunder from February 7, 2001. Let's be honest, Thunder never really meant much of anything. Any of the good moments, you know, were cool, but they almost took place in a vacuum because Thunder was just kind of where a lot of people were just shoved on there. Oh, we don't have anything for you to do on Nitro, even when Nitro was three goddamn hours, so we're just going to shove you on Thunder. And it really was the B-Show. I mean, my God, it was like just a pumped-up version of WCW Saturday Night. And it's a real shame because Thunder could have actually meant something, and it was really just filler programming. So Shivani and Tanae call the action tonight, and we get Shane Helms versus Kazayashi, a qualifying match for Super Brawl Revenge, where it's a four corners match with six people. So it's like the Elimination Chamber style, just without the chamber, the pizzazz, and really any of the drive, because it was two people that would start in the ring, and then four people would be outside the ring. So a four corners, six way match. Yeah, it's not Steiner math, because Steiner math was still a few years away. <laughs> Holy be the Steiner math. So, anyway, Helms uh, may have hurt his knee early on, but seemed to recover fine. He had a nice crossbody splash. Kaz did a cool dive later. And then Chavo would end up distracting Helms just enough for Kaz to hit a high kick and a German suplex pin, one, two, three. Helms would end up getting in this match, that six-way match, a little bit later because one of the participants would be taken out because they would be put in another feud. And it's a shame that the cruiserweights, even though they were being featured properly, if you ever put them against any of the heavyweights, they would need all the help in the goddamn world like I'll talk about here in a bit, to beat any kind of heavyweight, because we have to make it all about size. It can't be believable for a great cruiserweight athlete to beat a bigger guy. That was a bit of an issue in WCW. So anyway, uh, Norman Smiley is seemingly talking to Glacier off camera and says, well, if you'd show up earlier, I could win a match once in a while. Palumbo and O'Hare show up and beat him up off camera and then said, man, he kept tripping on his cape. And, okay, you know, because funny superhero stuff. Why was Glacier back there? I got nothing against the guy, but it was just a weird return. And then Ric Flair is talking, we are the Magnificent Seven. Okay, and then that storyline got dropped pretty soon after because, you know, the company was going to be sold and AOL Time Warner was like, no, we don't want WCW. We don't care if it's getting ratings. It's losing us too much money, and we're not going to be the wrestling network no more. That's going to be a bit surreal to review here in a bit, like in about a month or so. <clears throat> so, Scott, Rick, Totally Buff, Animal, uh, Flair, and Jarrett. Jarrett, who wasn't there, but would be included in the main event later. Nash, DDP, Adams, and Miller in the crowd. And they just shout back and forth about various matches. Adams challenges Luger, which he did on Nitro, but apparently Luger forgot, and they just decided to do it here. But they were also taping Thunder right afterwards, so I'm actually not shocked that Luger would forget something that happened seemingly an hour before. And so much talking, so much goddamn talking. Miller says he wants Storm, but he's got to wait for Super Brawl. Storm gets to pick his opponent later. And then Scott Steiner's talking to Rick. He says, oh, you got to wait for Super Brawl. Don't worry. You wrestled three times. I mean, you know, three not very hard matches on Nitro, but, you know, it's a, you're the flagship, all this. Woo! So, man, Rick was really trying to make this work. Nothing was going to work in WCW at this point. Norman Smiley versus Sean O'Hare in pants. It felt very strange to see Sean O'Hare in pants. Usually he wore uh, cut-off tights. It was all right. Glacier did not show up. And then Sean Tom Bomb, one, two, three. So then we get Jindrak and Stasiak attacking, and then Palumbo comes down because we're going to get the Natural Born Thrillers exploding at Super Bro Revenge. It's going to be very messy, and there's going to be a lot of mopping that needs to be done. Hopefully better mopping. That happened at a, um, you know, earlier WCW pay-per-view when they couldn't mop up any goddamn cake and nobody thought that they should have fucking done this, you know, <laughs> oh, I don't know, a little bit better, used a better mop, used better clean equipment. What the fuck was that stalling? That was ridiculous. Anyway, could old Vince Russo. Rick says, animal, life is great, talks about, you know, how much he can lift and the women at the bar being impressed with him. And then apologizes to Sanders for yelling at him on Nitro, but hey, no substitutions, you gotta face Conan tonight. And then we have Miller versus Skipper, Storm's hand-picked opponent. Look, this should have been good, and it wasn't. It was very awkward. Skipper kept focusing on Miss Jones, and it, it was sloppy. Feliner, one, two, three. And both these guys are good athletes. M Miller wasn't the best in the ring, but could work good with somebody. And, you know, with the right person. And Skipper, really underappreciated. Damn shame that he retired after only 10 years in wrestling, but I'm sure he had a good reason. Seemingly taking all those risks and impact, not being compensated properly, but... This wasn't all that good. And then Storm says, hey, you know, that's just first level. You want another round? Oh, here's Mike Awesome. And then he lays him out with a splash and we don't get a match. So it is what it is. 
totally buffed, trying to cut a promo and fail, mainly Luger, because Luger was not good at cutting promos. And then Chavo wants the wall to take out Ray. And then Hugh Morris's laughter is in the background somewhere. So maybe he's holding the camera and they didn't realize. And then Kiwi, you want to face the Kiwi? You want to face the Kiwi? You want to face the Kiwi? He says this to some guy, some very small black guy. I have no idea who he is. Apparently he was a wrestler. And then a young Chris Harris and some British guy in a singlet. I actually have no idea. Who, or he's New Zealand. I don't really know. And then Luger takes on Brian Adams. No, not that one. <clears throat> It'd be funny if he took on the singer. And it starts out as a brawl, and it was not good because Luger was shot, and Brian Adams was better in tag teams at this point. And later, Buff Bagwell tries to interfere, full Nelson slam, one, two, three. And then Buff and Brian Clark join in. Uh, Clark's like, oh no, Clark's like, I'm not going to sell this head injury that I have, you know, being busted open in the back of the head. I'm going against doctor's orders and all that, and we're getting a tag team match where Adams is going to have to go at, go at alone against Holy Buffett's Super Brawl because Clark won't be medically cleared. And then Ray versus The Wall is the Chavo special. And if you know how Chavo feels politically, you will understand that joke. So it wasn't exactly great because The Wall was never good unless you masked the fact that he, you know, could only really wrestle in tag teams or hardcore matches. And Ray was what he was at this point. Now Ray's still good, don't get me wrong. Ray has uh, accomplished a whole lot in his career, but... Ray was never going to, was only going to be like mid card at this point, as good as he was. Ray ends up battling Chavo after Chavo tries to interfere. The referee is distracted for about five years while Hugh Morris hits a moonsault, no laughing matter, and then Ray hits his own move, one, two, three. So yeah, Cruiserweight need all the help in the world to beat the wall, who really didn't mean anything by this point, so I think Ray beating him shockingly wouldn't have hurt the wall. So then Kiwi, uh, Flair, I'm all man, and he attacks another fan, and covers him for three, covers him, and the ref counts. And then there's that same guy that he challenged backstage, really small guy that makes Leon Ruff look, uh, you know, big by comparison. And then he lays him out with a pile driver for an R3 count. Flair, I want to be part of your group. And then we get Sanders versus Conan, no substitutions, and Tequila Sunrise for the win. And one of the Harris Brothers is now a manager. Cool, don't like the Harris Brothers. The Aryan Harris Brothers can go straight to hell. Jarrett and Rick Steiner versus Nash and DDP. Nine minutes left. DDP uh, gets beat up for a while. Hot tag to Nash. Jackknife to Rick Steiner. And there you go. And then everybody runs out that's all involved in the Super Brawl revenge matches. And that's it. That's it for Thunder right there. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.